Four G63s use hydraulic lash adjusters, or HLAs for short. Most people just call them lifters. Rather than have to manually adjust valve train lash with a solid lift valve train on a regular schedule to keep it healthy and quiet, the 4G63 is supposed to continuously adjust its valves using oil pressure, making it a maintenance-free valve train. But that design doesn't come without its drawbacks. There are advantages to both solid and hydraulic lift valve trains, but neither one of them are truly maintenance-free. And that's because oil quality and oil pressure problems can affect hydraulic lifters, whereas solid lift valve trains are imperfect pervious to those kinds of conditions. Oiling problems with HLAs reduces valve lift and therefore airflow traveling through the cylinder head, not to mention a loud rattling noise coming from the camshafts because the gap between the rockers and camshaft lobes increases. So if you've ever experienced valve train noise, this video is for you. These are a few crusty old first generation lifters. Over time, hydraulic lifters can become clogged with sludge or worse, filled full of trash. And some types of lifters are worse at this than others. Mitsubishi has revised these parts three times during the life cycle of DSMs, and there are easy ways to identify them. They have bottle cap style caps holding the lifter assemblies into an outer sleeve. They receive oil pressure through a hole in the side of the sleeve, and there's a check valve that traps some of the oil in the bottom, allowing them to expand and fill the gap. You'll know if they're 1G lifters because there's a tiny pee hole in the top. These lubricate the rocker arms. Only 1G lifters are like this. The other versions have big holes. And when these things are filled full of oil, they don't compress. I've got one here with the oil bled out of it, and you'll see that it does compress just using your fingertips. This is the state you want your lifters to be in when you install them in the head. If they're pumped up, you need to relieve that pressure or it can result in bent valves because a 4G63 is an interference engine. Second generation lifter stormed onto the scene with a bigger oil hole on top. You'll notice the cap holding it on was pressed on with precision unlike the bottle cap styled caps. The oil supply pee hole is also half the size of the previous, oriented in a deeper oil groove and drilled higher into the outer sleeve. It doesn't matter what kind of lifter you're messing with, you should always do it over a workbench because they'll be oily and slippery. But these work exactly the same. I have a set of third revision lifters that came out of my GSX. There are a lot of advantages to these and Mitsubishi now recommends using them on all 4G63 cylinder heads. When you remove them from the head, some will be pumped up and solid and some will be squishy. This is because the position of the cam lobes when the engine is stopped. Valve spring pressure over time compresses them making the oil bleed out. It's normal. Left to right, these are first, second, and third revision HLAs. They look a lot like first revision lifters except for the big pee hole on the rocker side and they went back to the bottle cap style cap securing the assembly. If it looks like the second revision is shorter than the rest, it's because they are. And also they went back to the big oil supply hole. The diameter of the oil supply grooves are now back to the same size as the first revision lifters, so visually you can tell them apart at a glance. The service manual says not to take these things apart. If you're a cheapskate with 1G lifters and don't want to drop 80 bucks on a new set of third revision lifters, this is the only way you'll ever get all the junk out of them. You pop the cap, pull out the upper piston, and extract the lower piston. It's tedious because you have to lift the lower piston while opening the check valve or it will suck itself back down into the bore. If you heat it up, the air inside will expand and hold the piston up helping you get it past the fill hole. Just don't roast it. Try not to mark up the upper piston because its oil clearance is extremely tight. Once you've got the lower piston out, there's a spring beneath it that you don't want to lose. Now it's easy to clean each part and reassemble them. Because the 1G oil exit is smaller than its fill hole, it permanently traps any trash that's ever fed from the oil supply. You can see a pasty black carbon goo in the bottom of it. It's not even slippery, in fact, it's a little gritty. That sludge can build up and block the check valve. So this is why it's important to meticulously follow your maintenance schedule. Clean all of your parts with carb cleaner and wear safety glasses when you do this. It's going to splash everywhere. Use clean, lint-free rags and wipe all the sludge from each of these parts. The lower piston contains the check valve. It's a simple mechanism which we'll be messing with all throughout this video. It's pressed onto the lower piston inside that stamped metal cap. You'll find a ball and spring valve inside it. You don't need to remove that part to clean it. There's enough clearance on that stamped metal housing to flush it out really good, but I took it apart just to show you. After a good soaking, put them all back together the way it was. Spring, lower piston, upper piston, cap. The bottle cap ring can be a pain, but if you're careful, it will go back on. It's all about the angle that you clamp on it with the pliers. You want a fine point needle nose and to bite down under the lip until the cap is snug. One down, 15 more to go. It's at this time when you realize that third revision lifters are less than $90 shipped for a full set of 16. That's about $5.60 each. 
They're better, quieter parts and recommended by Mitsubishi for your engine. Plus, you won't have to clean them before installation. So why are you doing this to yourself? Even when you disassemble them, the upper piston has a cone-shaped bushing that traps junk in the rocker arm side. It's pressed in and you won't easily remove it. Stop it, they're junk. This is about all they're good for. But if you're a cheapskate, at least find yourself a set of 2G lifters because you can at least clean them. Recognize that 1G and 2G valve trains share the same dimensions and that they were revised again for another reason. I don't know what that reason was to tell you, but if I were you, I'd at least use a set of lifters that you can clean. Here's the cone pressed into the upper piston. One piston rides against the other to allow the whole mechanism to work, and the lower piston is cut out around the check valve. I never had any intention of putting 1G lifters back in service, so this is equivalent of me playing with my food. The easiest way to bleed the oil out of a lifter is to crush it in a vise, but you should use soft jaws if you care about damaging them. This is the 1G lifter I just took apart and pumped back up off camera, so I don't really care. Bleeding a lifter does nothing to clean it, but you can do this to a cleaned lifter to relieve its pressure prior to installing it. Another way to bleed a lifter is to open the check valve. This is also the easiest way to free junk trapped inside the base of the second and third revision HLAs. Just use a paper clip and make every effort to bend it perfectly straight. That really helps make hitting the check valve a whole lot easier. To actuate the check valve, insert it through the P-hole and down into the base of the lifter. Once you touch the check valve with it, you can pump the oil and junk out by hand. If you're cleaning them, turn them upside down when you're doing this to drain them, and right side up to fill them. It's that simple. I'm going to go ahead and clean my third revision lifters out of my GSX because it ate metal shavings for the last mile of its life. I have no doubt there will be chunks, but because they're already the correct lifter for my engine, I can save myself 88 bucks just by cleaning them myself. I can do this because the rocker side has a big hole that will let all the junk out, and I can do it without taking them apart. It just takes a little time and patience. Start by poking the check valve and pumping the lifters. Tap them out and soak up the excess oil, wipe them down, and one at a time, place them in a clean container. I like metal containers when dealing with flammable solvents. I like smaller containers because it takes less cleaning solution to do the job. That's less fluids to contaminate and have to dispose of properly. With the process you'll need to go through to clean these, less is actually more. The upper piston has a fill hole in it that lines up with the outer hole. It's a good idea to rotate the inner piston to line those up so that pumping the lifters in your cleaning solution has a better chance of blowing chunks out of the assembly. It doesn't matter which direction it faces when it's installed back in the engine, but many people insist they should be rotated facing opposite directions during assembly. They'll rotate in all kinds of different directions once the engine's running, so it really doesn't matter. There's an oil groove that supplies oil no matter which way they're facing, both on the outside and the inside of the lifters, and it has no effect on the check valve, which is what's doing all the work. Right now you might be typing in the comment fields, Jaffro, what kind of can is that? It's perfect for these nizzles. I was asking the same thing before I used this can and stumbled across this little gem in the grocery store. They changed the top a little bit, but it's the same exact can. I'm using kerosene because it's a fantastic petroleum-based solvent. The service manual says to use diesel, but I don't have a green way to dispose of diesel, so I'm using kerosene. Though I know I won't hurt these injectors to soak them in acetone-based cleaners, I'm not using them because of their cost, their flammability, and rapid evaporation rate. Pump each lifter in your cleaning solution with the check valve open one at a time. If you don't remember which ones you have and haven't done, no worries. Just push down on them. The ones you've done should be hard as a rock. The ones with air in them are squishy. Check to make sure you got them all, and then let them soak. My first bath is going to be a 6 hour pre-soak, and that should give them plenty of time to dissolve the sludge and dilute any leftover oil. The process gets a bit repetitive here. Bleed all the kerosene out of the lifters and the check valves and bang each lifter out on a paper towel with a rag under it. You should use a white paper towel so you can see your progress. You're not going to hurt the lifters doing this because they're hardened steel and see much more abuse installed inside your engine.
Repeat this process until you don't see any more chunks, grit, or shavings coming out of them. Clean the can you're soaking them in each time you give them a bath so that you're not seeing the same shavings over and over. It can take three or four baths before this happens, but watching the can in the paper towel will tell you when you're done. Once they're purged, put on your safety glasses and use an acetone-based cleaner to rinse out the inside of the pistons. Hold them securely in a rag and use compressed air to blow each one out. Put them in a clean can and fill it with oil. Plunge the check valves and pump up the lifters so that they're clean, lubricated, and protected against the elements. You can leave them here until you're ready to install them, but you should bleed all the oil out of the check valves before installing your camshafts. That's lifter cleaning in a nut can. Check eBay for inexpensive third revision lifters from reputable suppliers and keep your valve train noise in check. Watch the Cylinder Head 103 Deck Tech video again if you need clarification for where they receive their oil supply. And just below the subscribe, like, and favorite buttons, I've placed a link in the description to another YouTube video with a really awesome cutaway illustration of how oil affects hydraulic lifters. If you've got tips for others that I didn't cover in this video, please share them in the comments.